please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in our community, particularly Jack Irwin Davis, Sr., beloved husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and 25-year veteran of the Scranton Fire Department and his family and friends he leaves behind. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, subdivision and land development evaluation from the Lackawanna County Planning Commission, received March 21st, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, audit status from Robert Rossi and Company, received March 21st, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, minutes of the Firemen's Pension Commission meeting held January 23rd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Uh, do any council members have announcements at this time? Uh, the Office of Representative Flynn contacted council today to inform us that the Linden Street Bridge excavating will start on Monday. No utility work will be started yet. The finish date is tentatively by December 31st, 2013. Also, I believe there will be garbage collections tomorrow, Friday, Good Friday. However, there will be no collections on Monday. And I'd like to wish everyone a very blessed and happy Easter and a joyous Passover. That's it. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Hello, Miss Janet. Hello. Yeah. You're not mad at me anymore? <laughs> Never. No matter what you do. Yeah. I want to uh, reiterate, how do you like that word? Impressive. My position from last week that I am before you people as a taxpayer and a homeowner and nothing else, no spokesman for, for anybody. <clears throat> you know, there's, I just have a vast difference of opinion with, with counsel on, on this matter. And, and nothing else than that. I've had differences of opinion with you people in the past a lot of times. I'm in no way whatsoever opposed to anybody on council running for re-election or running for another office. These things were brought to my attention this week. That's why I mentioned it. Because if I was, I sure wouldn't be fearful of saying it. As I said last week, I don't see spending $10,000 on a study to see if we're going to pave a street when we need money so bad. There's 250 miles of streets in town, and I never heard of a study to pave any of them before. You know, council is going against the DeNaples Corporation over truck traffic on this street. It, this is suicide for the city, really. 
you're opposing the largest taxpayer in the city, in the county, probably one of them in the state. They write over 2,000 checks a week, over 2,000 employees a week spending money at grocery stores and in department stores and so on. I don't know. You know, that's, what, what if you landlock them and three, four hundred people are laid off, even temporarily or furloughed? You're, you're, not, you're not thinking of the consequences of closing the street for, for one man's complaint. And he hasn't come back in here to confront me about it. You know, uh, I, I think you people have awoken a sleeping giant, really. I was given a message last week to bring to council, and <laughs> I won't say it, but it was unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it did have to bleep it out if I said what it was, you know. Well, then please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this is the same thing a, a couple of years ago. Council wouldn't wouldn't stop truck traffic for Darren Industries. They didn't want to interfere. They had overweight trucks going 24-7 the, in that neighborhood, and, and there was a complaint after complaint. Nothing was done. I, I just wish you people would stop this insidious obsession tonight about closing a street and landlocking this business. It's, it's a, I think your quest will end up as a very poor endeavor. There'll, there'll be a there'll be an attorney here from Pittsburgh so fast our heads will be spinning. We will lose another lawsuit just like the mayor has done year after year after year. I, I, I'm telling you. You know, I noticed in the paper this this week uh, the editorial page finally recognized the fact that. The university and colleges have just destroyed downtown in, in, in our tax base, but there was a little there was a little article there that said there's state aid for cities that have lost 20 percent of their tax base. Why aren't we on it? It was in the paper this week, and there's also an article about the Mr. Vope at the Lackawanna College. He wants to spend $15 million on Kapaus Avenue for an athletic field and another 500000 on Paul Ross Field, but he tells council and the people of the city to drop dead when you ask for a contribution. There's something wrong with those people. There's just something wrong. And in closing, this is not political. I just want to say Friday night at... Doug Miller's event, I, I, the congeniality and the respect that Brother Jack mentioned of, of everybody there, even people running against each other, was, was such so refreshing after after years of Doherty's filth and, and you know what I mean. It, yes. it, it, it was Thank just you. so nice to see people that are even opposing each other shaking hands and so forth. You did a good job, Brother Jack. Thank, Thank you, you Thank Mr. You. Ellman. Thank you. Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city good resident, evening. homeowner, taxpayer. I walked in tonight and saw these new lights. It's the first time I've been here since they put them up. I don't know if it was the new lights or my new eye. I just <laughs> had cataract surgery on Tuesday. Oh, <laughs> oh I hope they're okay. <laughs> Uh, I too want to wish everyone observing the Passover holiday a happy Passover and everyone uh, observing Easter a very happy Easter. Uh, 
Mrs. Evans, I was disappointed to hear that you're not running for re-election for, I think it's 10 years now you've been up there. Yes. You've done a great service to this city and the residents. No matter what Chris Kelly, John Cole, or the editor, or anybody else on the door the newsletter has to say, it's easy for them to sit behind their computers and type away. Let them go up there and sit up there for 10 years and trying to straighten out a city that an incompetent mayor tore down. And I give you all the credit in the world, and you will be missed. Thank you so much, Mr. You're Spindler. Uh, I don't have too much to say. You, you answered my question. I was going to ask about the Linden Street Bridge. So that's good news. I, I hope it is fixed by the end of the year. So do we. It's, it's long overdue. Absolutely. And uh, I was surprised to see, because luckily, I, I think it's lucky for me, I've been parking at one of the dead meters. And much to my surprise, I went out to work one day last week to find the meter was working. Mm. And I walked around to see a few others in the area that were dead, and they are working. So I guess, would that be, is the parking authority going around taking care of them now? Um, it's probably uh, standard parking that okay. has been taking care of that after um, all of the new uh, pieces of equipment were purchased by the city. Okay, because I know there were four or five in like a, a one to two block area near where I work. And so for a while I was getting free parking. Now I can park a little further away and walk. <laughs> but uh, it was, uh, at least the city will be getting that revenue and that's a good thing. Yes. And I, I have to take council's part for what Mr. Uh, Elman was saying. I, I think the, the Lakes Grant Road, should the truck traffic should be banned. Those residents deserve to have quiet on that street and not to have the trucks going back and forth all day. And uh, just hope that problem is resolved for those people. They pay taxes too. Mm -hmm. uh, no. That's all I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Well, that's all. <laughs> it's bad transformers. <laughs> Andy Sprague, fellow Scantonians. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Good evening. All I'm going to do is wish our Jewish friends a joyous Passover. And our Christian friends, of course, happy Easter. And there's no sense making anybody mad this is close to the season. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Too, Thank you. Good evening, Council Dave Dawson. Good evening. Good evening. President Good evening. of Scranton. Uh, I have here. Uh, I promised uh, to cut this out for you people. It's uh, an article, Senate debating tax-exempt status. There's a new article. I'll bring that next week. Thank you. It's something that probably should concern you because we're at 33 or 35% or who knows. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to see it 50. As far as I'm concerned, the rest is water over the dam. Whatever we can get out of them, we can get out of them. And, uh, okay, uh, on new candidates uh, for uh, council. Now, different people have come here to complain that they were campaigning from the podium. but. In some respects, I don't see that as all that bad. And I would prefer that, from a personal perspective, they do show up at council meetings so they could become familiarized with the activities of council and what's working and what's not working. Uh, some comments have been made uh, that they might be able to get along much better with the administration or whatever, well, that's debatable. You don't even know who that's going to be at this time. And 
I'd love to see council take them under their wing for a couple of months and just so that it's left with somebody that's knowledgeable, the town is left with somebody that's knowledgeable uh, or up to, up to speed with what's going on around them instead of getting handed a parking contract with more holes than a piece of Swiss cheese. I always complain at the grocery store, they're way in the Swiss cheese holes. I want my rebate. <laughs> I pull that on all the managers. And, uh, okay, I'll probably put this in writing, but I was wondering if, uh, from over the years, we heard a lot about the Kanjorski Bridge at Neog Park, uh, the bridge over the gorge. And I was wondering if that was totally paid for by the state or if we had to kick in on it. And and uh, I'll maybe sit down at the computer and and get a. It'll be interesting to know. And uh, once again, the city and the uh, animal shelters are having one heck of a time keeping up with the load of cats, especially. Dogs are pretty much under control, but not entirely. Uh, and there's a spay and neuter, 570-994-5846. Have your pet spayed, because anybody that has a cat doesn't need a second one. That's all there is to it. And, and a third and a fourth, and it'll probably be more like a, a fourth and a fifth. So uh, in not too long. So if the cat gets out the door, if, he, if he's not neutered or she, uh, uh, they will dirty your house up something awful and they're not a good pet in the first place and if they they are uh, they won't uh, necessarily try to get out the door so much and uh, well also uh, I'd like to uh, comment on the uh, sequester decision I think that was just dandy with me and uh, some people in Congress are trying to, it seems like they're trying to make the administration own, in Washington, own the uh, Social Security cuts. So it's nice to see your mother or your father or your in-laws live independently if they want to, or that, at least that they have a choice someday. Because uh, uh, currently, if they chain down a, the CPI, it's something like $1,000 a year after about 12 years. So that's almost like missing a check, one check out of, out of the year and uh, for the average Scrantonian. And uh, it uh, might not be able to pay their property tax someday. Who knows? You know, and uh, finally, uh, the Golden Parrot once again goes to the Scranton Times. I'm sure you people are tired of hearing about it, but uh, you were mentioned with Senator Mello, who is in currently in jail, and uh, if anybody should be in jail, it should be the editorial board for the Scranton Times. Thank you, and have a good night. Don't forget to bok, bok, bok. Thank you. Thank you. Is Thank there you. anyone else? Fifth Order, 5A. Mr. McGough, do you have any comments or motions? Um, just very quickly, a couple things that were in our mail uh, that had been talked about. I don't know if anybody else was going to address these. Um, there was a, a citizen's uh, comment about the, uh, the fact that Meadow Avenue was not on the paving list um, that was submitted to us. Um, I believe that that area would not be available for paving under the CDBG funding, which I believe is what we received, a list that was, um, that th those streets were fundable under CDBG. Um, however, um, we also received a response um, that Meadow Avenue is on the city paving list, that there is an intention to pave Meadow Avenue, also to reline it so that the flow of traffic on Meadow Avenue would be facilitated. I know there are some problems, especially with the service station at the corner of River and Meadow. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and hopefully that with the relining and the repaving, uh, there will be some some resolution to that problem. Uh, I must admit that I am probably part of the problem. I use that service station, and I do make left-hand turns onto Meadow Avenue out of there, and uh, it is a very difficult situation. But hopefully it will be resolved. Um, the other thing that, we, that I brought up last week, and I was, has been brought up by other members of council, was the food trucks that were um, parking on a particularly Courthouse Square, mm -hmm. and uh, there was questions as to whether that was permissible. Uh, uh, we received a response from um, Chief Graziano that the food vendors are paying the full daily rates to standard parking to be able to park at these meters during business days. And it was l then stated that this has been a practice of standard parking and also from the uh, practice of the Scranton Parking Authority going back however many years. Uh, it just says for some time. Um, but it, the last uh, line of the, uh, of the letter from Chief Graziano says that although this has been a standing practice, it may be in conflict with city ordinance. And I, I would believe that maybe that is something that we should look into is is there an ordinance that prevents that from, from happening? And also, I, I don't know that we received any response from um, licensing as to whether uh, those food trucks pay the, the, the same fees and taxes that established businesses do. Um, that's another thing that we should look into. But. Um, there, it, there has been some action on this just to let people that are concerned know that um, there is, we are doing something to look into the situation. Mrs. Um, Craig, I think Mrs. Craig has some information oh. for us. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. McGough, I, we don't normally give you the letters you had requested at, at one point. But in the uh, letters that we sent to the chief and standard parking, we actually cited uh, the ordinances that they're violating. And oh, I know okay. from, have, from having worked in that department and part of my career here at City Hall that those are two-hour meters. So they are most definitely a violation. Then there's another, another ordinance uh, that pertains to parking overnight <coughs> on a city street, which would also uh, be a violation. And then that's something that the police enforce. So just wanted to bring that up. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I, I, I think there does need to be some supervision and some changes uh, as far as the food trucks are concerned. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can move forward on that. Um, and then the last thing, I'm uh, happy to see that there is a, um, a me or it just uh, proposals for the parking management services will be held. Uh, Monday, May 6th. I know that's still kind of a long way off uh, that we is had that hoped the, that this was done. Is that the pre-bid conference? Uh, it says this, that proposals will be opened in council chambers Monday, May 6th for the following, City of Scranton Parking Management Services. Okay. So I'm, um, I was going to talk a little bit about this later, but um, Solicitor Hughes had told me uh, this week that a pre-bid conference, I have the date in uh, my motions tonight, um, will be held on April 12th. So that will get, I believe, everything moving along. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, um, a happy Easter and um, Passover to, to all. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Rogan, do you have comments or motions tonight? Yes, thank you. Um, first, just to talk a little bit more about one of the items that Mr. McGough brought up and that a lot of residents contacted me about over the last week was, uh, the, and as Mr. McGough mentioned, the paving list that was published in the paper um, was through federal funds. And, and these funds can only be used in low to moderate income areas. 
I know some residents who have contacted us and, and members of council have been pushing for you know, other streets to be paved that simply just couldn't be because of the federal guidelines. Um, I, I do believe the article did mention, though, and, and it is true that there is about a half a million dollars of other money that can be used for paving anywhere in the city. Um, and that being said, I do have a list that I will read off later that some residents brought up to me. Um, so hopefully some of those will be put on the list. Um, next, just a, another comment about an article that was, that was in the uh, Scranton Times this week. I uh, was very frustrated, and I know many of you were too, when to read that um, former city employee Carl Greco has tax liens on him for nearly a million dollars. When I know going back um, before this council took, um, took power, he was making very large amounts of money through OECD, other agencies, mm -hmm. um, being billed at an hourly rate, and he was, you know, it seemed the, the bid specs were set that only he could, be, he could apply. Um, what's done is done, and it's unfortunate that he, he made over a million dollars from taxpayers, and now he owes over a million in federal taxes. Um, and, and that's not a city issue, but what is, and, and with my colleagues' agreement, um, I would like um, us to send a letter to Berkheimer asking if there are any taxes owed to the city from Attorney Greco. Um, and with everyone's agreement, I do have that in writing. I definitely think that's something we should look into um, because it's, it's a very hefty sum that's owed to the federal government. So it would be, one would assume he likely owes the city as well. Um, next, I, I would interrupt no. for a second. I think it would be good to send something um, maybe to tax collector court right since he uh, collected income taxes for some of those years sure. as well absolutely um, and we'll, I'll add that actually I do have that there also um, and next I would just like to thank um, Pat McMullen from the DPW and our clerk Nancy Craig for helping with the situation um, for a handicap sign there was a resident who contacted me um, stating they went down to the DPW to get a handi handicap sign and somebody at DPW told them, well, we don't do them anymore. Um, and uh, from the response that I received today, um, it should be taken care of within the week. And also I would request that we send a letter to Chief Graziano um, to look into areas where people have had handicap signs and have passed away. Um, I know, for instance, just a block away from me, the 300 block of Hyde Park Avenue. If you drive down that block or walk down that block, there are probably at least 30 handicap signs. Yeah, and I think it's safe to say that many of those signs were there and that somebody would move or possibly pass away and the sign would just stay there. So instead of having to print new signs every time somebody requested one, if we could start recycling and could save the city some money and give, give people a quicker turnaround. So if, if we could do that as well, Mrs. Craig, and thank you again for, for working so quickly on that. And finally, just a list of a few streets um, that we receive requests on and, and that I also had, and most of these are repetitive, <laughs> but we'll mention them again. Um, Mr. McGough mentioned the one in 200 block of Meadow. Um, also, I know Mr. Joyce has mentioned these before, Greenbush, Reese, and Rockwell. Um, the 300 block of South Edward, Edwards Court. The 1400 block of South Irving and the 400 block of Orchard Street where Rosen Court and Manley Court intersect um, to be repaired in the meantime and hopefully put on the pave list. And I would also hope that the city paving list will be spread out amongst the entire city, um, not just focused on one neighborhood or another, but it should be spread equally to the roads that, that need the most repair. And um, actually one more response that I forgot to mention, Chief Graziano has been absolutely great with getting back to city council with uh, questions that we have put in uh, sometimes the answer isn't what you want or what you like but it's always he always replies and he mm -hmm. is one of the few department heads that's really on the ball with that and, and he deserves it deserves a thanks um, this is regarding the people parking in the fire lane at the Kaiser Oak shopping center I brought this up a couple weeks ago sent it to Chief Davis he responded quickly said it was a police issue we sent it to Chief Graziano and he replied that they will be upping patrols um, patrolling efforts in that location to, to uh, monitor this issue. So this is how it's supposed to work um, between the resident, the council, and you know the department heads. So hopefully we'll see more of that cooperation moving forward in the future. And again, thanks to everyone who did reply to council. 
And finally, I would like to wish everyone a happy Passover and a very happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Loscom, do you have comments or motions tonight? Yes, just a few items. Uh, I, too, would like to wish everyone a happy Passover, happy Easter. And uh, just to touch on two subjects that we, we discussed here tonight already, as Mr. McGough mentioned Meadow Avenue. Um, there was a lot of complaints, as we know, safety problems up in that intersection. So we had a meeting yesterday with uh, our city engineer, our DPW director, uh, our chief of police, and uh, some PennDOT executives. And Mrs. Craig happened to be there with me also. But we had discussed the situation pulling out of that gas station. And the worst is, is pulling out onto River Street and going across the median there. It seems people are still doing that. Believe it or not, hopping on 81 and, and going over the bump. They've knocked over some markers there. But it, it was a pretty good meeting, and, and it appears that um, all of Meadow Avenue there will be blacktopped. There will be new lines and a considerable amount of signage uh, that should help uh, out-of-towners to show them where eight, Route 81 is. That big yellow sign at, at the end, which is off to the right, is going to be moved into the center. Um, and there will be curbing placed on the River Street side there where they always have garbage dumped and the, and the, the mm -hmm. tree or flower tents and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So there should be sig significant changes there that will help with, with the uh, safe aspect. And uh, hopefully that will answer all the questions. But uh, it, it was a pretty informative meeting. It was a good meeting, and there was a lot of cooperation all around. So I think that will be a, a big improvement for that area. And um, another area that we have a problem, and, and I happened to take a ride by afterwards, and ironically in my mail this evening there was a letter from, from a person who wrote me uh, stating a couple months ago they requested information about the traffic light at Lock 1 in North Main. I thought that was corrected because it seemed to be, okay, I will go by that again and, and check it, uh, complaining about the timing on it. But the big factor is... Uh, the West Lock 1 Avenue Bridge. The West Lock 1 Avenue Bridge, if you remember, um, the news media, I was, I was there with the news media, and this was back in July of 2011, and the next day, Director Brazil stated he was going to take care of the sidewalks, level them off. Um, it was requested at that time that the pin, by the PennDOT engineer who was there with me that, that the north side of lo the West Lock 1 Avenue Bridge, the sidewalks, closed off because of that section that is moving. Right now, that section is literally hanging by a wire. I have pictures that I took yesterday compared to the pictures I took the other day. I don't know how it's still hanging on there, but it's going to go down any day. And hopefully someone's not walking on those sidewalks when it goes down. So before we get into a lawsuit from someone getting hurt, uh, I will forward the pictures to Mrs. Craig, and, and perhaps we could get a, get an updated uh, set of photos and uh, recommendations to our city engineer and our uh, public works director. Um, I think at, at the very least, we don't have the money to repair it at this point. We do have to close, close those sidewalks off. It's a very dangerous situation. And uh, like I said, there's a significant movement from the time I took the pictures originally till now. And, and like I said, literally it's just I, I think those two wires are, are holding that section from, from dropping. And the same person who wrote me the letter uh, mentioned about the lights on the bridge. Now, it appears a couple months ago they were able to get the lights working on the south side of the bridge. But until that bridge is repaired, the wires that are literally holding that piece of concrete are the wires for the lights on the north side of the bridge. And they're basically pinched off. That whole conduit is shot. The only way they could redo those lights is, is if they fix that and run a new conduit or a whole new outside wire, which I don't even know is if it's legal at this point. But, um, you know, I know we have a lot of bridge problems in this city, but uh, I would hate to see another bridge from west side uh, go down and be closed or at least cause bodily harm to someone before something can be done about it. We've had significant time and warnings about it, and nothing has been done. 
And that seems to be the problem here. We wait until things are crumbling before, before they're taken care of, and, and then they end up costing two, three times as much to repair. So, you know, knowing, you know, it, it, it's in our best interest to do something about this situation now. And, and I will forward the, the photographs and everything at this point. Any information I have, along with the, uh, I mean, we do have bridge inspection reports and stuff like that. But I just wanted to mention that because, ironically, you know, I, re I had received a letter on that. And just to that person who sent me this letter, I have been following up on this for quite some time. We've had promises that things were going to be done. We could only request it be done. Uh, we could send it to the proper channels, but those in authority, they're the only ones that can make the decision to do it. And they've neglected to do it so far. I just hope that they won't neglect the taxpayers anymore before someone gets hurt here. And uh, I believe that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd also uh, like to extend my thanks to you and Mrs. Craik for attending uh, that meeting up at Meadow Avenue uh, yesterday with Chief Graziano and the PennDOT representatives. I, I believe that, you know, we're on our way now to getting things done, and it's yes. because the two of you took the time and put the effort in to really address this personally and get it done. So thank you both. You're welcome. And Councilman Joyce, do you have comments or motions tonight? Yes, just a few comments. Um, first tonight, we received a report from the single tax office controller regarding the city funds distributed comparison from 2013 compared to 2012. And I'll just give everyone a brief update where we are. As everyone knows, the uh, single tax office collects real estate, delinquent real estate taxes, as well as the LST and business privilege and mercantile taxes. So far for this year, the single tax office has collected and distributed $10,179,920.10. In comparison to last year, uh, the tax office collected $8,315,658.61 in the same time frame. This is an approximate increase of 1,864,261.49, which is a 22.42% increase, which is in alignment with the overall tax increase that was passed earlier this year. Uh, moving on to delinquent real estate taxes, so far the tax office has collected 243812 in prior year delinquent real estate taxes only. Um, in the same period last year, the tax office collected 184684.81. This is an increase of 59127.45, or 32.02%. In regard to the uh, LST, the local service tax, which is the uh, $52 per year tax that uh, workers pay, the uh, tax office collected 375,445.30 so far. During the same time period last year, the uh, tax office collected 391,380.11. This is a slight decrease of 4.07%. And in regard to the business privilege and mercantile taxes, so far this year the tax office has collected 219,103.25. During the same period last year, the tax office collected 87,416.62. This is an increase of 131,686.63, or an increase of 150.64%. I do have a few uh, requests that I'd like our city clerk to forward as well. One is dealing with rental registration. I was contacted by a resident, and I did actually go see the property. Uh, the resident stated that she received a rental registration bill, however, um, it's a single family home and not being used for a rental property. And she said that she contacted LIPS and 
to have the property removed, but she was told that they can't remove it from the database. I did actually go out and see the property and view this for myself just to make sure it wasn't a, a duplex as uh, she stated it, w it was saying, it w she was being told on, on the uh, form. But I'll give you the address and it's 635 Breck Street. Also, uh, residents of the 500 and 600 blocks of O'Hara Street have informed me that there are numerous potholes among, or, uh, along the road making travel conditions difficult. And uh, they would like to see if not um, their streets added to the paving list. So if we could contact uh, Director Dewar and see if there's anything that he could do to get these uh, potholes patched. Also, uh, we received a report uh, from one of our clerks in uh, council's office from the animal control officer that this month there were 60 animals brought to the Griffin Pond Animal Shelter. Uh, six of uh, our furry friends were reclaimed, so we were charged for 54. And the total number of animals brought this year without the animals that were reclaimed is 83. So we're on line with the um, amount of animals that were allotted to bring to the shelter in accordance with the uh, $35,000 payment. And uh, I would just like to wish all of our Jewish friends a very happy Passover and all of our Catholic and Christian friends a very happy Easter. And that's all for tonight. Thank you. Good evening. I have only a few items to discuss briefly. First, the bid for management of the on-street parking program was completed and should be advertised in the newspaper in the next several days. According to Council Solicitor Hughes, a pre-bid conference will be held on April 12, 2013. Second, Council is very pleased by the announcement that paving of 52 city blocks will begin on April 1st. This project is funded by CDBG monies, and these paving allocations were increased in 2010, 2011, and 2012 by the members of this council in fulfillment of our goal and pledge to you to increase paving, blight removal, and public safety. The city blocks selected by the administration are located in low to moderate income areas. Additional paving outside those areas, as Councilman Rogan noted earlier, will be funded by a $500,000 grant. Uh, next, on June 13th, 2012, City Council forwarded a letter to the Chairman of the Pennsylvania House Urban Affairs Committee in support of House Bills 89 and 90, which would allow municipal public safety employees to purchase military time toward retirement. And so again tonight, with my colleagues' uh, agreement, I ask Mrs. Craik to send letters on behalf of Scranton City Council to State Representatives Flynn and Haggerty and the Chair of the Urban Affairs Committee with a copy to, sta to State Senator Blake in support of the reintroduction of House Bills 128 and 131, formerly titled House Bills 89 and 90, which were referred to the House Urban Affairs Committee on January 16th, 2013. While the city of Scranton remains a Class 2A municipality, its public safety employees are not afforded the ability to purchase military time toward retirement. The Council of the City of Scranton respectfully requests that House Bills 128 and 131 be brought to a vote by the House Urban Affairs Committee as soon as possible. And uh, there is another response that Council received from Chief Graziano. Um, and this involves a property, an abandoned property at 1406 West Gibson Street. And the Chief says, we, meaning the SPD, 
were originally involved in the process to have the property evaluated and ultimately condemned by licensing and inspections. I spoke with Director Mark Seitzinger regarding this property and he confirmed that the property is still currently condemned and will be on the list for demolition. His department would be responsible for any compliance issues with this property until it is actually demolished. In response to the second part of Council's letter, the police department does not have a dedicated blight officer who routinely handles such complaints. The sector officers and housing inspectors would respond to blight issues in their respective areas. Blight enforcement in low to moderate income areas will be one function of the two proposed OECD beat officers once those positions are able to be filled. The police entry level civil service testing process is ongoing and once there is a certified police hiring or hiring list, those two positions will be filled. And I thank Chief Graziano for his prompt response. And finally, I will submit my citizen's request from East Mountain uh, to our office for notification of the appropriate parties. And that's it. 5B, authorizing excavations uh, on the 200 block of Penn Avenue and the 300 block of Linden Street to permit motor vehicle ingress, egress, and regress into a parking lot at the corner of Penn Avenue and Linden Street for NGP Enterprises, LLC. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? <clears throat> yes, on the question. Huh. I just happened to, to see this this afternoon, and I did take a ride by. This is the where the old Pub Charles building mm -hmm. was. Um, you know, I, I will be voting to introduce this, but it, it's, it's a bit of a disappointment. That whole block is going to be a parking lot. I mean, this was supposed to be St. Peter's Square, big development at one time. Now it's all blacktop. Um, I thought part of the Rich Report asked for a moratorium on downtown parking lots because of our situation. Mm -hmm. uh, with the parking garages and that. So, I mean, I have mixed, mixed feelings on this here at this point, but uh, I will vote to introduce it, and I will have a comment on C also. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and so moved. 5B, excuse me, 5C authorizing the removal of parking meters on Penn Avenue, 200 block, and Linden Street, 300 block, in the city of Scranton to provide an ingress and egress from Penn Avenue and Linden Street to a parking lot for NGP Enterprises, LLC. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Uh, I didn't look, or I haven't found. How many meters are we talking about? It's actually five meter heads, it appears to be. Is it five? Yes. I thought it was three. Three but meters, they're but they're double, two or double heads right. so, uh, by the meter numbers. And will, will the property owner make up the That was going to be my of, question. That was going to be your question. That we don't know. I, again, I, this is probably something, you know, Vote you know to I, I'll probably vote yes to introduce, but I think we should find out if there's, yeah, if they will, if they're going to pay for the removal of the, you know, the mm -hmm. meters uh, over, and you know the revenue that would be made from them over time because it is uh, that area is uh, you know heav heavily traveled yes, and uh, you know the, those meters are used. And, and I should go back. Uh, one other thing, um, actually, I. If they would actually pave that, would be a great improvement over what's there. Not that we need more parking lots, right. but sure. th that that corner something needs to be done to make that more presentable. Um, and so, the you know, is the parking lot a good idea? I don't know if it's a good idea, but it's better than what's there. 
but I think we do need to find out about the uh, the removal of the meters. This is Craig. I agree. This is Craig. Too. Could we um, perhaps have our solicitor contact uh, the owner and uh, inquire if there will be payment for? Uh, revenues lost due to the removal of the three parking meters and as Councilman Loscombe said two are double headed meters so I, I would would add I agree with everything that was said and maybe I know it's very short notice but maybe um, you know the individuals who are looking to build a lot may come in and speak to us at a meeting I, I don't know if mm -hmm. we'd, we'd have to do a caucus or just have them you know at the podium and you know, ask some questions. I have some some additional questions as well, um, and obviously we, we we want the city to you know get the get our, our fair share, and we don't want to you know stop somebody from improving a piece of land that I think everyone agrees is a is an eyesore right now. Mm -hmm. So hopefully something could be worked out where it works for everyone involved. So if uh, we could include that request to our solicitor, that you know when he is uh, discussing the previous issue. He can also raise that yeah. issue of an invitation to come to council, whether during a public caucus or during citizens' participation, so that we might receive um, a more thorough update on exactly what is being planned. Anyone else? All those in favor? Of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of council number 13, 2013, an ordinance, amending file of council number 17, 2012, as amended, entitled, Establishing a Registration Program for Residential Rental Properties, requiring all owners of residential rental properties to designate an agent for service of process and prescribing duties of owners, agents, and occupants, directing the designation of agents, establishing fees for the costs associated with the registration of rental property, and prescribing penalties for violations by amending Section 1X, Safety Inspection, by deleting the phrase, but it's not limited to. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of council number 14, 2013, an ordinance as amended, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to execute a deed conveying pedestrian bridge column easements located in the public right-of-way on the 300 block of Colfax Avenue and conveying an aerial easement in the airspace located on the 300 block of Colfax Avenue where the pedestrian bridge is erected and further to execute an air rights agreement between Geisinger Community Medical Center and the City of Scranton. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, file of council number 12, 2013, ordinance of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, appointing civil crossroads consulting engineers as special city engineers to the City of Scranton due to a conflict of interest of SECO Associates Incorporated, the City of Scranton's engineer, to investigate and perform engineering studies regarding the condition and deterioration of Lake Scranton Road from Route 307 to Elmhurst Boulevard, issue opinions, recommendations, and specifications for the required rehabilitation and resurfacing of all or portions of Lake Scranton Road, authorizing the payment of professional fees up to $10,000 to be paid from the city's repayments of urban development action grants account and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute a contract with civil crossroads consulting engineers. 
As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 13, 2013, Appointment of William Lesniak, 314 Pittston Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, as a member of the Historical Architecture Review Board. Mr. Lesniak will fill the unexpired term of Nancy Bizignani, who passed away. Mr. Lesniak's term will expire on October 11, 2017. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.